Hi, welcome back. This is going to be a very quick tutorial on how you can draw gold nanoparticles with plasmonic hotspots, particularly configurations like nanoparticle on a mirror. To get started, all I have here in the scene is just a basic backdrop and I also have an HDRI lighting the scene like so. So to get started, we're going to add our nanoparticle and a mirror. Let's start with the nanoparticle, shift A and add a UV sphere. Let's scale it down to something more reasonable. Right click, shade smooth. And if you want, you can also apply a subdivision surface modifier. Go to the scene collection list and call this a gold nanoparticle. Let's also add what will be our mirror. I'm going to use a cube, you could also use a plane. I'm going to scale this in the z direction. Just a little bit more. Something like that will do. Okay, and we'll call this our mirror. Great. So if we look in rendered view, we currently have this. Everything is white. So let's go ahead and add some materials. Pull open a side panel and change this to the shader editor. I click on the gold nanoparticle and open a new material. Let's call this gold nanoparticle. I'm going to bring the color to something pale goldish, so something like this. Let's pull the metallic all the way up to one and bring the roughness down to 0.25. Something like that, great. I'm going to repeat the same process for the mirror, but I'm going to create a different material for this. Let's call this mirror. And I'm going to apply pretty much the same settings as I did for the gold nanoparticle. Again, uh, orange tinted color, crank up the metallic, and lower the roughness. Let's go ahead and add a camera. Shift A, camera. Let's move ourselves in the scene until I see something that I vaguely like. Something like this. Go to view, align view, align camera to view. To snap the camera to the view you're looking at. And as always, I like to crank up my passport too in the camera settings to block everything else out. Uh, and that's looking pretty decent. Okay, so now we have our nanoparticle and our mirror set up. Okay, to make the hotspot, we're going to use a little bit of geometry nodes. So I'm going to make this right hand window a little bit smaller and change this from the shader editor to the geometry nodes editor. Essentially what we're going to do in geometry nodes is use that to calculate distances between the gold nanoparticle and the mirror using proximity and use that to influence the shading and therefore create the hotspot effect. So with the nanoparticle selected, click new and we'll call this the gold nanoparticle node tree maybe. Okay, And we're going to add only a few nodes, so this is quite simple. Shift A and first add a geometry proximity node. Right, so it basically takes a target geometry from which you calculate the distance. So click on target, pull out and add a object info node. And so this basically you want to specify as the mirror. So what this is now going to do is calculate the distance between the mirror and the gold nanoparticle. And this distance is exactly what we want to save out to control uh, where we have our hotspot forming. Go ahead and add a store named attribute and plug that in here and plug the distance into the value. And name this stored attribute dist. So I'm basically storing the distance between the gold nanoparticle and the mirror for all of the faces of the nanoparticle. To make it easier to control this later, I'm going to add a float curve and for now I'm going to leave it like this and you'll see how this can be used very shortly. But that's basically it for the nanoparticle setup. Now we basically need to do something about the shader to create the hotspot. So open the shader editor. So now we have the na gold nanoparticle material showing. First add an emission node. This is going to create the plasmonic hotspot effect. Add a mix shader node, add a attribute node, and one more, a color ramp. 
go, not a mixed color, a color wrap. So what you're going to do is first in the attribute node, we're going to call that distance parameter that we saved out using geometry nodes for this gold nanoparticle. And if I control shift, left click, apply scale. So I'm going to apply scale to the sphere. Go back to the geometry node editor. This is where we use the float curve node. Go ahead and add a node somewhere to the left of this curve. Now drag up the control point. Uh, nothing is still happening. That's because I forgot to check this uh, object info and set it as relative. And now we start to see a bit of a gradient. So that's great, we now have a gradient, let's come back to our shade editor. So remembering that we have black or zero at the bottom and we have one or white at the top. We're going to use this as a mask to control the mix shader and how the mix shader mixes the emission and the principal BSDF. Since the distance value is black at the bottom, we want the emission to happen in this black area which is exactly where the mix shader sees zero. And to plug the emission into the first socket, which corresponds to zero, I'm going to plug the principal BSDF into the second socket, which corresponds to one. Now, if we plug it all in, you can see uh, it's not particularly convincing. Uh, we need to do some controlling and tuning. Let's first change the emission to something a bit more useful. I'm going to change the color to something a bit warmer. And let's really crank up that strength. So at the moment that you see a little bit of a gradient, but we want this to be much more pronounced where the emission only happens at the bottom. Go ahead and drop the color ramp node now between the attribute node and the mix shader. And what you want to do is start playing with these handles. So if I bring the white handle all the way down, you'll see that we can now constrain the emission just to the bottom. We can make the transition a bit smoother by going from linear to ease. Just to show you what's actually happening by controlling the color ramp, if I take the output and show that by moving this white bar closer or further away from the black, we're changing the mask that controls the mix shader. So let's go back to our mix shader. So we can toggle this all the way down so that the emission only happens towards the bottom. Something to note here that's really neat is since we are controlling this emission hotspot using the distance value, if we move the nanoparticle up and down, you should find that the emission goes away comes back in as we change the position of the nanoparticle relative to the mirror. So if we bring it all the way close, we have a strong hotspot. If we now move that nanoparticle up and the distance increases, the hotspot gets less. And so we can actually control how much hotspot we have uh, just by changing the position, which is physically quite reasonable. If you further wanted some more control over how this hotspot decays, going into the nanoparticle, come out to the geometry node editor and play around with this handle on the float curve to make the transition sharper, smoother, whatever you like. I am probably going to go for something like this. and This is already looking quite reasonable. In my case, I'm not going to particularly bother about doing a hotspot equivalent on the mirror side, especially because I have a reflection of the nanoparticle, which creates enough of a bright spot uh, where the nanoparticle is touching. If I now wanted more than one nanoparticle, it's very simple. You click on the existing nanoparticle. I'm going to use instances rather than actual real copies. So I'm going to Alt D to create instance duplicates. And I'm just going to scatter a bunch of these around the gold like so. So if I come back into the camera view, uh, we have a nice scene with gold nanoparticles with some hotspots sitting on top of a gold mirror. If you wanted to add some extra effects, like defocusing and focusing, we just need to play with the f-stop of the camera. For that, I'd go ahead and add a empty, name that empty focus. Position that focus on one of the nanoparticles. So I'm going to position it right where the first nanoparticle is. Come to the camera, camera settings, enable depth of field, and then just select that focus to be your focal object. You can toggle the f-stop value to make it more or less defocused in the background. 
if you're in the situation where the system you're studying involves a gold nanoparticle on top of a mirror with something in between, maybe there are some molecules or maybe even a layer of 2D material that you're studying within that hotspot, uh, this option still works. Go ahead and move the nanoparticle up a bit to create some space. And all you need to do is just make whatever layer you want within the gap. And that could be whatever you want. It could be a polymer layer, it could be, again, 2D materials, but the hotspot situation still works. The nanoparticle will still see the mirror underneath and compute the distance from that, so the hotspot effect still works through whatever spacing you put in between. And there you have it. Quick gold nanoparticles on a mirror with hotspots and stuff in between. So now you're able to make figures that look something like this, that you might have seen in papers, whenever you want. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Uh, please leave a like and a comment. If you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, subscribe for future videos, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.